Hey traders, Paul here with Gamma Edge. Uh, we've gotten a lot of questions in about the Gamma Edge market model, which utilizes something called the cumulative tick. So I wanted to give kind of a high level overview of the tick, the cumulative tick and some results that we've gotten uh, as we've integrated this with our Edge Raider uh, back testing capabilities. Before we get into that, uh, please pause your player, read this. It's important to you, it's important to us, and would ask that you hit the play button when, uh, when you agree to it. So what is the tick? Uh, the tick is uh, shown here in this picture on the left in the green here. And basically it shows the number of stocks that are rising and falling within a given time frame. Here I've selected one minute. I'm looking at what's called the ARCX, and this is a... Uh, compilation of three exchanges predominantly, uh, the NYSE, the NASDAQ, and the Amex. And the Amex has most of the options on it as well as the ETFs. And basically what we're seeing here is that on a minute over minute basis, uh, we have a, a range that's plotted every minute. And within that, we have the uh, basically the number of stocks that are advancing and the number of stocks that are, are declining. Now this happens on a, a tick for tick or a trade for trade basis and so we can see visually what is happening uh, on the aggregate exchanges, in this case the ARCX, on a minute over minute basis. And what you see here is that uh, for the time frame that is shown here on 617, we actually opened up the day, we were net buying because we were above the zero line so more stocks were, were being bought. And then you can see it went below the zero line and we started coming down. Now I've got the SPX shown here. Sometimes they time correlate, sometimes they don't. But the key takeaway is that when we take a look here at this, uh, we get a sense, instantaneous sense, of what sentiment is in the market. And the trend that you see coming down here is indicative of selling, developing, and then the trends going up, of course, are buying. And you see how this, this could particularly work out. What we end up doing is when we take those individual bars and we take the value at the end of the bar and we stack it, we develop something called the cumulative tick. And the cumulative tick basically shows us where the ticks have been rising, which is this period here. And then as the tick comes through, you can see we start declining here on this magenta line. And this is very uh, useful for us because it, the slope of the CT line, as well as is, you know, how is it in relation to past events, tells us how strong, how weak, what is, is you know, in happening overall with the overall tick. So this gives us an unbiased, non-averaged value that uh, basically tells us sentiment at any one uh, given time. So selling was occurring here, we remained fairly horizontal, we hit another low uh, of selling, and then you can see we started improving here, and then sure enough, for a good portion of the day uh, on Friday, we were moving up in terms of overall net buying. We remained above the zero most of the time, as you can see this trending up. And then as we started to get into the you know last hour and a half of the session, the CT didn't really advance. And you can see we averaged more or less above the zero line, which is kind of indicative of what you're seeing here. So for us, this tells us how strong a move is, either up or down. It's not averaged. The only averaging that really takes place is your bar width. And we choose one minute for a reason. We find that one minute or 30 seconds works extremely well for this. I do not advertise to folks that they uh, go to like a five minute bar or a 15 minute bar. There's too much smearing of information in there. Uh, one minute, maybe two minutes is the absolute longest you would want to use on your CT tool. Uh, all the default settings, we have this uh, available in our, our Discord uh, for both TOS as well as TradeStation. They all default to one minute. The way we take that CT and apply it to form a market model is really what you see here. We've got four different callouts shown here, one, two, three, four. The instantaneous CT is shown here. And you can see that uh, day over day, it was decreasing, stabilized here on Wednesday, continued down on Thursday, more or less stabilized, and maybe even had a little bit of strength uh, at the end of the day on, on the 17th here. We do combine some moving averages with these. This is more of a visualization tool. Uh, we can use these to, to come in and out as a timer. 
Um, but nevertheless, it helps us understand what is the overall trend either on a short-term basis, which is the, um, the white moving averages that you see here, and you can see the CT starting to push up into those, telling us that perhaps we're getting a bit of a turn uh, on a short-term basis or a longer-term basis. We call this the ribbon. Um, this was actually constructed by uh, observing all of the turning points over a number of years that occurred between going long and going short or the signals coming off and um, the duration of these moving averages was selected to coincide with those uh, those turning points. Why that's a big deal is that uh, as we fall, as you see here and as the ribbon falls, we actually get closer and closer, especially if we start this horizontal behavior here. And the closer we are to the actual ribbon, the more the likelihood is, is that we could actually push higher above that, which would be in, in some of the signals, could be a turning event or an opportunity to, uh, in this case, go long. We do look at a couple key things within the ribbon. We look at the relationship of the shortest moving average, which is the red one, to the cyan line. And when the red is below the cyan, we are in a confirmed downtrend. The converse of that is true too. When red is above cyan, we're in a, in a uh, confirmed uptrend. So that's a big deal. Uh, we also look at the slope of these lines. You, you can visually, you can see that they're all pointing down. That is a confirmation of a long-term downtrend. And so the, the key takeaway for everyone here is that uh, we have the ability to use these moving averages in the CT to come up with short-term signals, the spread here distance being a medium-term signal, and perhaps the longer-term signal being here with the overall averages and, and uh, the status of the ribbon. So as we go forward here, there are really two primary ribbon signals that, uh, that we're looking at. One of them is the inversion, and we're going to talk more about that here today. This is our longest term signal. Um, as I was just describing, it's long when that shortest MA crosses above the, uh, the longest MA. So red crosses the cyan from blow, and you'll see an example of that here shortly. And then we, we also go short or go to cash when the longest MA crosses above the shortest MA, and that's when the, the cyan actually crosses the red from below, and we'll, I'll show you an example of that. We have another one here. It's where the slopes change, and so this is a long to medium term signal, and basically we go long when the slopes of the moving averages are all positive, and we also go short or cash when the slopes of them turn negative. I'm not gonna be talking about that one here today. I'll do that in a separate video. We're gonna to concentrate today on what we call the ribbon inversion. So here's an example of a bullish ribbon inversion where you can see that the red line is now crossing over the cyan line. And when that occurs, uh, we, the CT has already been above the ribbon. It's, we've already experienced some of an up move, and now we get this confirmation as we, uh, as we go through time. Conversely, uh, we can uh, uh, invert this, and basically this becomes a bearish signal. And so when the red crosses that cyan and pulls below, you can see that the CT has already let it down, and uh, this too can help us you know, get out of a signal or get out of a, you know, what we're doing, protect some, some trades, things of that nature. So the, the two here, just backing up, one of them is where the, the sh shortest MA crosses the longest MA which from below, which is a bullish signal, and one of them crosses, uh, the shortest crosses the, uh, the longest from above, uh, which is a bearish signal. When we take a look back in time and we just look to see what is the average duration that these signals last, a bullish crossing lasts a considerable length in time. The majority of the bull signals last between 11 and 40 days. So this is well, and these are trading days. So well over a month, sometimes upwards of two months. And you can see how the distribution, you can see that we've got 10 days per bin in here. And so there's a lot of grouping in this area. And that's, that's important. Um, because once we catch the trend, we tend to stay with the trend, and uh, this can help you get on the right side of the, uh, um, of the trade. Bearish is much, much shorter. As you can see, we're only four days per bin, and what this means is that um, we, our downward moves are typically very fast, much, much shorter, and we need to be thinking about getting out of those trades much, much faster than we would here. So the downward trend is not nearly as strong as and, and lengthy as the upward trend. And this is important because uh, this signal works really, really well in a uh, bullish environment 
where volatility is dropping. Uh, the signal is mixed because of the delays that you saw earlier uh, in a bearish sense, and we can talk more about that if, uh, if there are questions. Um, I want to take everyone back. Uh, this is important for our testing, and I just want to give some concepts here. Uh, the mean is this where you see the, the mu sign here. And basically, when we have a distribution of test results or prices, although prices are typically log normal, you can see that when we, you will hear people talk about one standard deviation, well, really, what does that mean? That means that 68% are within the uh, mean, of, or 34 on each side of the mean, and you can see two standard deviations actually takes us out here to 95%. And so you're gonna see some terminology as we go forward in this video and other videos about um, two standard deviations or the 95th percentile or things related to that. You also hear people talk about tails. And what are the tails? The tails are the observations that actually occur out here. And we want to pay attention to what those tails are. We're not going to stress them today, but we do want to pay attention to them because if we don't have a nice, what's called normal distribution, uh, normal's bell-shaped or bell curve, uh, then that means we're, we could be forcing more events out to the tails, and whether they occur on the left side or occur on the right side, is important for our trading strategy and our risk management. Part of the testing that we do here then is to take that concept of distribution and start looking at tails. And um, in in this whole, how do we prove that uh, you know the market model is going to work, etc. We're doing something called a Monte Carlo. Now, a Monte Carlo basically is taking uh, a series of trades over a period of time. And what we're going to do is we're going to randomly take 50 trades out of there and we're going to see how they're distributed. Where do they fall within this overall distribution? We're going to do that over and over and over. And in doing that, we come up with what which is called a like final equity 50, a final equity 5, which is a left tail, and a final equity 95, which is the right tail. And so this is how the equity curve distribution would look for a portfolio that was looking at a strategy. And so underperformance, overperformance, normal or average performance is what this is showing. Now we can do that for the equity distribution. We also can do that for the maximum drawdown. How bad is the pain that we would experience uh, if we were to do a strategy? And then again, we've got this left tail area here. We've got this right tail area here. And you can see in a best case scenario, we're way down here, less than 10% in this left tail area. But over here in the right tail area, the maximum drawdown could be fairly substantial in this, in this example, 55% with an average sitting here, which is the 50th percentile sitting here, probably about 18 or, or yeah, right here, 16.4%. So what's the takeaway? By looking at this, uh, these distributions, we can get a sense of how good or how bad a given strategy will be and how we, we employ it. And so we use this methodology. We've integrated with a company called EdgeRater on this. Great tools. And they allow us to, to do this type of analysis. And we've also combined our gamma uh, levels also with EdgeRater. And that allows us to go back almost 10 years in time and, and, um, and look at how gamma performs that. Again, not part of today, but it is part of the power that, uh, um, that we can bring to the table to look for these edges. So what's our test methodology here? So we've got, I want to present to you what's the baseline. You know, how, how did we construct this? Um, and then I want to talk about that ribbon inversion and what does it really mean? So the baseline is just basically we're going to buy because the markets are generally in an uptrend over a long period of time. We're going to buy long at the close every day. We're going to sell long uh, at the close after holding it end day. So basically one day, two day, three day, all the way out. Um, we're just going to sell the position independent of what the market's doing. So we're going to look at this distribution of time. If you hold it end days, what does it look like? And we're just going to do that day over day for literally over 3,000 uh, days in the time frame. Uh, the ribbon inversion, we're actually going to buy long at the close every day under whatever the condition is. In this particular case, it's going to be when that red line, the, the shortest moving average of the ribbon, crosses above the cyan. 
and uh, basically we're going to go long on that day. So we'll sell after the close or at the close after end holding days. So it's the exact same methodology as up here, except after end days, we'll, we'll get out of the trade. And then we're just going to repeat that day over day. Um, and we do it this way as opposed to having a sell rule, uh, which we, we will do in another video at some time. But this method is in alignment with how we, we tra uh, trade and invest. And so basically, if we miss the initial signal for whatever reason, we're busy, we're working, life intervenes, but we want to know, should we get in? We always we don't want to take just the signal. We want to take the signal plus the subsequent days that the signal is active. And that'll give us a truer, at least I believe it will give us a truer view of how we actually trade. We want to have confidence that we can move in the direction of the trade even after that, even after the first initial signal. And so with Edge Raider, we're going to do a thousand Monte Carlo runs here. So basically, we're going to you know run the simulation ten or a thousand times, and we're going to take fifty trades per time, and then we're going to do all the statistics on that. Um, it's going to be a lot of data, and we we we've crunched all that. So here's the baseline. So basically two charts are showing here. And so if you simply uh, just buy a position every day with, with really no regard for the, the market status, remember you're in a long-term uptrend, so you're gonna go long every day. You're gonna hold for a certain number of days, which is shown here on the x-axis. What this basically has shown is that uh, on a, what's called the FE, final equity 50, this is the 50th percentile or the average or the uh, maximum drawdown 50, MD50. Um, Basically, we've got with total gain in the numerator and maximum drawdown in the denominator and a number less than one, the risk is much, much higher than the reward over time. You've got to hold this portfolio for at least 10 days in order to see just parity where, where the risk and the reward are at the same level. And then as you go beyond that 10 day period, it does trend up, but you can see it's it's fairly weak and the numbers here never get above two. And typically we wanna see a profit factor that's above two and we're not we're not seeing that here at all. So we, although we do have some improved lower left to upper right, um, you'll see here what a, a really good test does. Now the question always comes up, what does this look like in terms of real gains or real drawdown? And so that's what this next chart is here. Here's that same parity at 10 days. That's what this area is here. And you can see the blue is the final um, portfolio gain uh, as a function of days. So if you were like on the five days, you would just hold for five and sell, et cetera, and do it over and over. And you can see that your risk is much higher than the reward you would get in your overall portfolio. In fact, that would, over the long period of time, you're not gonna have much gains in your portfolio at all. And you're gonna have, you know, taken on substantial risk. Right here at about 10 days, just like I was saying, you've got parity, and then above that you do get some some um, improvement. And we feel this is because you're catching a trend uh, as they occur and you're able to go out, but you don't know exactly where those trends are. So you can see that this is not a very compelling way. We would actually never do this baseline in real life. We would be very unhappy with its performance and the drawdown here at 20% would scare the bejesus out of us, especially if we weren't getting making any forward progress in the uh, the overall gains. Now let's take a look at the ribbon inversion. This is where with that fastest MA is above the slowest, right? So this is a go long with that upward trend test. And so this is where basically the cumulative tick is above the ribbon, the ribbon is confirming. Uh, I showed you the picture of that earlier. And one of the first things to realize in the green here is where we were with the, uh, with the baseline you can see that we take off right away. So this is that unity that you saw before. And so at 10 days, we're already four times improvement on reward to risk compared to the baseline. So we're, we're doing very well and you can see how linear this is. And the key takeaway for us here is that within about three days, you're, you're, you know, as the trade works out and does what it needs to do, you're in pretty good shape. You'll know that, uh, you know, you, you'll start seeing some gains overall. And if, if things, if the wheels are coming off the wagon, for instance, uh, within that time frame, you'll see it just because based on the average and the number of trades here are, for, are significant. We're up in the thousands of trades. So, um, you know, the takeaway is that uh, the reward risk profile improves dramatically uh, as a function of holding time and as a function of just looking at that CT signal. Now, one thing that I, I do want to 
kind of indicate out to everyone here is that here are what the actual portfolio gains are over time. And so basically for the money that was committed to the portfolio, uh, in this particular case, I think it was uh, $1,000 per trade, um, you can see that uh, the blue line is really just, it's almost a linear line coming up here, whereas the maximum drawdown collapses as the trend is intact and it's found. So this ribbon inversion methodology is really, really good at getting us into that longer term trend and can be used to, to confirm, hey guys and, and gals, you need to be in this trend, right? You need to be looking at this and the ratio of these two is what gives us this really, really good performance. Performance. Note here that over a large number of trades, if you were just to hold for a month, which is what uh, the, the 20 to 21 days is, um, you're going to be 9x on your overall reward risk. So that profit and loss is, uh, is an amazing number. Um, doesn't mean you're going to be invested all the time, but it does mean that when it works out, it has a, a tendency to work out really, really well. So let's look at the other way. Let's look at, let's go long when the signal uh, is in a condition where the slowest uh, is now above the fastest. So this is where the red drops below the cyan line. And why is that a, a, a big deal here? Well, when that red line drops below the cyan line, uh, that's usually a risk off signal. And so this is, you know, we're gonna kind of do the counter here. We're gonna go long against the upward trend. We, If we're gonna see a difference uh, between the, the previous slide and the data here, we, we want to know about it and that'll tell us is this noise or is this real something that's happening here so same metrics as before but look at what what the difference is here basically it's just noise and we have to go all the way out to uh, approximately 16 days just to get parity and so the risk you're taking and the reward you're taking you don't realize so if you're fighting the trend this is basically saying you're taking a way disproportionate amount of risk instead of knowing in three days you may or may not get what you want uh, over you know over 16 days and I would argue 16 days might even be the start of a new trend which is why you start seeing this type of behavior up here same type of presentation here you can see the orange line which is the maximum drawdown is rising a considerable amount we're well over 25 uh, percent now as we go between 15 and 20 days I'm gonna back up one slide just so you can see that look at this this is under 10 percent if you're following the trend so compare that now if you're fighting the trend if you're trying to go long when the market is going down you're you're gonna see disproportionate uh, drawdowns in your account and your gains that you're going to get are going to you know potentially be shattered here so this is basically the opposite of what we had and basically says if you go long against the upward trend you're going to pay for it you're going to lose stuff so the the takeaway of the, from this of course is now that we want to make sure that we we are following the trend in general another key thing that we get asked about is you know what's the win loss rate and win loss is a great metric because if you can get out of the signal uh, before it starts turning on you then you can capture those gains and just keep repeating so over here on the left uh, the red above cyan is the short moving average going above the longer moving average and so this is going long with the trend this is the one that's favorable and you can see as a function of days held uh, as you catch those longer trends, the win rate goes up and you can see it's north of 70, it's approaching 72% here. And then the corresponding loss is, you know, these have to go to unity um, or 100%. Conversely, cyan above red, which is the slow moving average in red. So red is crossed uh, from above and now we're in that downward trend line long against the trend is the signal here. You can see we're barely able to get up um, over 60, whatever, 62, 63 percent. This is most likely noise. The, the key takeaway here is that we're not realizing a large winning percentage. We're not realizing a good risk reward ratio. That's over here that we have when we are over here on, on, on a, a, you know, following the trend. And as a result of that, this is going to chop us up. So even though this is better than a coin toss, 50-50, remember the uh, slide 
back here where it showed, you know, we're not really good on, on the risk reward and we're not really good on the drawdowns. And as a result of that, um, this is really, when you do win, you'll be okay, but it doesn't count the magnitude. And the magnitude here tells you it wasn't very good relative to the risk that you took. So, so what are the limitations of this methodology? So let, let's, as we wrap up here, let's let's take a look at these two because I want everyone to understand this. So if we're going long, um, uh, the tested buy signal is the actual day of the inversion. If you remember, that's when the red crossed above the cyan. Um, we've already moved up uh, a large amount. And, and the example of that was what I showed here. We've already moved up a large amount here when we actually get the long signal. So these were all gains that aren't recorded in the overall um, presentation. So um, it's not part of this, but it does exist. And there will be other discussions here about how to capture some of these others. There are other tests that we've done that are, uh, you know, this would make it a very long presentation if I went into all that right now. So we'll, we'll hold off that for another day. But just be, just realize this is the most conservative longer term trend that is, but it is a limitation of, of the values. If anything, it underestimates some of the, uh, the gains that are possible. Um, Note that the tested signal is a days held signal as opposed to having a, a sell signal in there. And again, that sell signal is when the ribbon inverts back. So we get a failure, we get the CT blown blow uh, and pulling everything back down. We didn't do that in this series of tests, uh, but we would in real life. And so that was a limitation of the test. You can't test everything the same way. So this is, uh, this is the compromise. And then if you remember the chart that's right here, there is a finite life to these long trades as well as the short trades. And as you keep investing day over day and day over day and you get to the end of you know, 28, 29, 30 days, it's very possible you're gonna start moving into a regime where perhaps um, the longevity of that long signal is, is gonna fail and you could have some losing trades in there. So the idea behind this is that there is a finite life to a long signal. Uh, additional trades near the end of the lifetime are prone to failure. And we just have to realize that and know that, you know, most of your money will want to have gone in up front and uh, near the end of the signal, you would get less and less. So your progress, your exposure would be minimal as you added near the end, whereas you would add um, as you had confirmation bias or confirmation that you were, you were uh, able to increase your exposure, you would add more money up until a point. On the going short side, uh, taking the short side, when the long signal stops, um, the, the shorter MAs are, are now less than that longer, so the red is below the cyan. Uh, it's not the inverse of this. It undoes the signal, but going short here is not necessarily proven. And the reason is, is that the short signals move quickly. If I, again, I wanna point everyone back to this picture. Look at the days. We actually have a lot of these things which rip down very, very quickly. And uh, as opposed to grinding up, uh, oh, up, upwards of 40 days here. So the majority of the signals are less than 17 days. As a result of that, it's the same thing. There is a lag in the in the overall ribbon inversion, and it's very, very possible. We could have already moved down aggressively and started the next uptrend by the time this, this starts to uh, uh, invert. So just be aware of that, that you won't, don't necessarily want to go short. If you're a long-only investor, this is a signal that will work very, very well for you. So what are the overall conclusions? Um, it's a long signal, uh, specifically the fastest MA crossing uh, on the inversion from below uh, provides the, the best performance. So basically, if you can go in and come out as that signal moves, uh, that'll be a, a very, very good thing. Uh, it has the highest risk adjusted in final equity uh, versus the maximum drawdown. That was that ratio that you saw. The average trade performance over a large number of trades, uh, the minimum amount that we had in any of these sets was 1,460, uh, is a function of the holding days. And it has, you know, it improves as we, uh, you hold the trade longer, as the trend is intact. Um, the ribbon inversion signal is the highest duration um, uh, of long trending signals of all of them, meaning it is best at catching those long-term trends. So when it does go, it, you have the greatest probability of the greatest edge 
of being in the right trade. So just be aware of that. And then, of course, the win uh, lose number, the win loss number is significantly improved if you follow that primary uh, long CT. So, you know, we believe that the ribbon version is your last chance to get on the long bus. If you failure, fail to observe it, uh, or if it inverts on you and, and tells you to take the trade off, um, you, you could be, you know, uh, having some negative returns there. So you definitely want to look at it. Uh, we do think um, you, you want to know where it is in, in regard to each, of, uh, each day and what the overall market is. And um, we think that will dramatically improve your overall uh, testing and investing. Um, so that's it for today. Um, hope this was useful. If you liked what you saw, we, we talk about this uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff in our Discord. You can get into the Discord here at www.gammaedge.us. That'll take you to a sign-up page. I'll get you in a 14-day free trial. Um, also, please follow us on Twitter at Gamma Edges with an S. And then here on YouTube, if you like today's content, I know it was long, but uh, a, lot of, a lot of good detail in here um, that, uh, that we believe in. Uh, go ahead, hit that smash, smash that like button, excuse me. And, uh, of course, subscribe to us so that you can be notified of the next time we post something. So with that, uh, thank you, everyone, if you made it this far, and hope to see you in the Discord. Take care.